Now to this fourth indictment against former President Donald Trump. This one, a state indictment. The Fulton County District Attorney Fannie Willis brings, bringing that RICO case, a racketeering uh, charge against Donald Trump and 18 associates, alleging essentially that the entire effort to overturn the 2020 election was a continuing criminal enterprise. And our next guest, a former Republican uh, representative from New York, he voted to impeach the former President Trump in the aftermath of the January 6th attack on the Capitol. Uh, and joins us now, ABC News political contributor, former U.S. Assistant Attorney John Katko with us. John, thanks very much. Uh, so, John, I want to. Uh, Trump's campaign has put out this statement saying prosecutors are, quote, taking away President Trump's First Amendment right to free speech and to the right to challenge a rigged and stolen election that the Democrats do all the time, the ones who should be prosecuted, are the ones who created the corruption. And I want to ask you, as somebody who has served the country in elective office at a very high level, been in the hurly-burly of American uh, uh, political campaigns, especially in New York, what do you make of the free speech defense here? That the president, anybody, has a right even if they're wrong, maybe even if they're lying, to make an argument that they won an election. Yeah, that really is a nub in this case, and it's a nub in the other cases that he's charged with uh, federally. Uh, I did uh, organized crime and re racketeering cases on the federal level for 20 years before going to Congress. And this case, in my mind, is, is a, has a very simple question. There's no question that the central charge here is that uh, the president conspired with the others listed to unlawfully change the outcome of the election. Well, there are, it's clear that they endeavored to change the election. The president and his cohorts are saying it's legal what they did. They, yeah, we, they tried to change the election results, but they were doing it, and it was free speech. If the jury doesn't believe them, they're all in very big trouble. And that's, what, that's the simplicity of this case, is that if the jury's convinced that they're doing things that were illegal to out change the outcome, then there's going to be a problem for them. And if you look at the indictment, there's some pretty serious examples of that. Intimidating election workers, uh, messing with voting machines, calling uh, calling uh, an individual in, uh, the president calling an individual in Georgia and saying, mm -hmm. I just need 11,000 some odd more votes and we can, we can uh, change the election. Uh, any one of those alone, would they be enough? Maybe not, but if you put them all together, and, and present it to the jury and tell them it was an unlawful endeavor, uh, I think this case has far more teeth than they realize. And yes, their argument and their only argument is a First Amendment defense, but I'm not sure uh, a, First Amendment, a First Amendment of right is unfettered. You can't go into a, a, a movie theater and yell fire. And, you, and I, I think there's limits to free speech, and uh, this case is going to be a perfect test of that, those limits. And it will depend, as you point out, on how the evidence is presented, how that story is woven together, whether it's persuasive to the jury. And, John, I want to ask you about your vote to impeach uh, the president, uh, former President Trump, and what it cost you in, in, in many ways. But also, if after the attack on the Capitol, Donald Trump had been impeached, as he was, convicted by the Senate, removed from office, banned from holding federal office, would we be facing any of these charges? And I wonder if there were Republicans who thought, well, he's finished anyway, I don't have to stick my neck out as you did, or maybe they'll have enough Republicans without me. What do you think of that counterfactual, that hypothetical, that if, if the Congress I had done... I think that if it... Please. Yeah, I'm sorry. If, I think if the defendant had been impeached, uh, I, th I don't think we'd be here. That's one thing. But also, I can tell you, and it pains me, and it's probably one of the saddest things I've learned since I've been in Congress. Members on both sides of Ireland Congress vote to save their jobs and keep their jobs instead of doing what they know is right, despite the political peril. And um, those of us who stood up for what we thought were right didn't do it for self-aggrandizement because we were all put through hell for doing it, but we did it for the right reasons. And I think we need to get back in Congress to a time where people did things uh, to, that are good for the country, not good for themselves. And I think that those are two very different dynamics going on right now in Congress. Well, John, my dad used to tell me that, that you have to respect the man you shave. You got to look in the mirror and be able to respect yourself, and I, I, I bet you can. Your dad's a smart man. <laughs> well, thanks very much. Former Congressman John Katko, we'll see you again. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.